<laughs> I'm Scott. I'm Chris. We're two guys, guys brewing. This week we're doing a uh, track recipe. Uh, we're going to do a stout. It's kind of a long lines of the Guinness. It's not uh, an exact Guinness clone, but it's pretty close. Um, so if you like Guinness, this will probably be a little bit sweeter than that because it's uh, we're not using any sour greens or anything in it. Uh, got a recipe offline. Uh, good place to get recipes. Go online and type in what type of beer you're looking for, and you'll find hundreds of recipes. So you type in something like Guinness clone, <laughs> or you could type in Genesee cream ale clone, but you won't get a Guinness recipe. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can type in. Any, whatever your favorite beer is, especially if it's a commercial beer, you can find a, you should be able to find something close. It's usually a clone recipe. Yeah, it might not be exactly the same, but pretty close. Uh, yeah, most of the clone, most of the recipes that I usually am looking for, I want an all grain recipe and they all have extract in them. And this week I was looking for one with an ex, with extract and all I found was all grain. So, <laughs> so I, had, I did have to specify uh, I wanted extract. This recipe is uh, fairly similar to what we did last week. We're going to have some steeping grains, uh, and we're going to use some DME. Uh, and there's a couple other adjuncts, uh, maltodextrin, uh, which is basically a non-fermentable sugar. Uh, they call for gypsum. Uh, my my water's already pretty hard, so I don't really need to be adding brewing salts or anything. Yeah. We're going to roll with it the way it is. Yeah. yeah. And Irish moss and corn sugar for bottling. So it's really fairly simple recipe. Um, this recipe actually does call to uh, for putting the the grains in before the water is up to 150 degrees. So we're going to do that. Yeah, so that's the time to do that. We're going to bring then we're going to bring the temperature up to 150 degrees and rest it for 15 minutes there. And that's all we need to do with the steeping grains. And, There's some uh, grains that we picked up earlier today down in our. Uh, Local homebrew shop. I'll read the right. recipe to you. How's that? <laughs> I tried to look at it and guess what we got in here. Yeah. All right. Uh, now this recipe said you could either use seven pounds of uh, LME or five pounds, ten ounces of DME. We're just going to use six pounds of DME for round one. <laughs> uh, one pound of flaked barley and one pound two ounces of roasted barley. Uh, then for the hops, we got it calls for. Uh, one ounce of Kent Golding uh, at 4.9 alphas. Uh, stuff I got actually is a little higher, so we're going to do a little bit of math. We'll kind of go over the math on bittering units today or, and proper amount of bittering uh, if your hops has a different alpha acid than what your, what your recipe calls for. Uh, 1.5 ounces of uh, Northern Brewers pellets at, uh, at 6.9. Uh, again, the one I got is a little high, but I only have one ounce, but it should be pretty close. This one isn't quite as big as the one we had last week. <laughs> Want a twist tie? Sure. It's kind of, I think, critical that you watch your temperature pretty closely because a couple degrees off can make a big difference in what kind of sugars you get. And, I mean, steeping grains, it's not quite as important as if we were doing an all grain kit, yeah. but if when you get to the all grain level, a temperature a couple degrees is a big difference. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be doing an all grain kit next week. It's going to be our first all grain. We're going to try a, a brew in a bag, uh, which is a, a newer method. And it's a pretty easy for the first time uh, all grain brewer. So if you're a newer brewer and you're just starting to do, this is a good way to refine your technique and get used to your system, your stove, your kettle, the multi boil, and, and your thermometer and watching to see. Yeah, so we're, we're, at, we're at 142 already, so we're, we're already getting close. Yeah. I should stir that around a little though just to make sure because that grain probably dropped the temperature a little bit when we put it in there. It's not a lot of green, so I guess it didn't drop it that much. 
Yeah. What do we got? When you're at, when, when, about a little over two pounds. If you're at 12 pounds of green, that's going to definitely drop your temperature right. a lot more than, than two pounds. But we're already getting some color in there. And if you've got 12 pounds of grain, then you're obviously doing an all green batch and uh, temperature is more critical when you're mashing where this is actually technically it's steeping. steeping. So. We're making tea. I don't know if any of the greens in there actually have any diastatic power or not. I doubt it. I doubt it. I mean, that's a, a roasted, the ro it's roasted barley, so it's not, it's not even malt. And the other is flaked barley, so neither of them have, are, have been malted. They're, they shouldn't have any sugars to be converted or any starches to be converted. They should be pretty lifeless, mostly for color and flavor, flavor and mouthfeel. Right. So we're not going to get fermentable sugars out of there. It's not going to add to our alcohol content. It's just all about flavor. Mouthfeel, like you said. Foam retention. Yeah. Well, if you want a stout, you've got to have some dark stuff. <laughs> it's got to be dark. Yeah, coffee comes from somewhere, don't it? Um, and this year, this week, we're going to be using the yeast is a uh, an Irish ale yeast. Uh, this recipe actually says you can also use the Nottingham. And I still have a pocket package of Nottingham from a few weeks ago. But we're going to use some Irish ale yeast. And this is actually some Irish ale yeast that I've uh, recovered from another batch of beer, which we'll get into more of how to do that down the road. But um, should be should be good. I've, I've had no problems with these uh, recovered yeasts. No, they work uh, work good. It, here at Dr. Homebrew, we offer a wide selection. Uh, our malt extracts are Brees liquid, Muntins liquids, Brees dry malt extracts, Brewer's Best beer and greeting kits. And we carry a full line of grains from uh, Avangard, German malt, Dingemans, Muntins, Brees, a full line of specialty grains, special B, flaked rice, white wheat, you name it, we've got it. And we will crush it for you, no charge. Uh, we're at uh, eight. 25, so it's been about 15 minutes that our, our grains have been steeping. So we're going to unsteep them. Mmm. It smells like burnt grain. <laughs> Let me get something to set that on here. Actually, you think would that fit in here? Maybe. Yeah, probably not. No. No? Got a colander? Yeah, down here by your knees. All right, you see? Now we're, never mind, okay. <laughs> Slip that under there. Oh, okay, you know, well, that'll sweep across here, right? Yeah, it will, actually. Hey, look at hey. that. Hey. Look at that. Boy, that was a good colander to grab. <laughs> we'll just let that drain and squeeze it a little bit. We can actually turn the, turn the gas back on because we want to get this back up to boiling. And, uh, Go with the with our instructions here. Let's see what we're supposed to be doing tonight. All right. Uh, remove the grains to bring water to a boil. That's where we're at. Add extract, bitter hops, and maltodextrin all at 60. Um, so everything goes in all at once. Hmm. There you go. Bring to a rolling boil for 60 minutes and start timing when rolling boil is achieved. So add hops and miscellaneous additions at intervals listed above. Uh, so basically they're saying everything goes in at 60, uh, except the Jimson and Irish Moss, which would go in at 15. And then I want you to cool the wort at 75 to 80. Place in the primary fermenter, stir vigorously for a few minutes, then pitch yeast. And then obviously the stir vigorously is to aerate the wort, we talked about before. Uh, and then the rest of this we're not going to worry too much about. Uh, if you were, th this recipe actually did, does call for um, adding uh, some Guinness to the to the wort. Uh, with that, they want you to let it sour, which is basically let it sit out for about a week, souring. And then this recipe actually calls for uh, freezing it and then thawing it out and heating it up to 180 to 190 minutes for 20 minutes. Wow. <laughs> then you add that to the um, we're not doing that, uh, but I would expect that if you wanted to do that, you could take some of this beer when this batch is done, save out 24 ounces, which is basically two bottles of beer, uh, and let that sour, and you can go ahead and do that. And 
we may do that, but I'm not planning on doing this bat in this brew again. But I might do a different kind of a, a Guinness All Green clone or something down the road. And uh, I'm going to use a, a bottle of this to, to sour that. All right, I have it. We're good. Squeeze that out pretty thoroughly. All right, more thoroughly than I ever do. <laughs> Pretty convenient, huh? Yeah, that calendar works kind of good for it. So, all right. Uh, then, uh, now we're just waiting for it to boil. So we'll be back when it boils. We're going to do some actually do a little bit of calculations on our hops now. With, uh, with the alpha acid, with you're bringing out the alpha acid. Eggs, the alpha acid. That's how you determine how many bittering units you're going to get. Well, right. Well, this recipe calls for one ounce of 4.9 alpha. And our Kent is. All right, our Kent is 7.2. 7.2. So at one ounce times 1.9 is or 4.9 is 4.9. So we need to take 4.9 over 9.2. 7.2. 7.2. X over one. <laughs> Pencil. Yeah. yeah you do it on a calculator, the cheater. 4.9 <laughs> divided by 7.2, is yeah. that what you said? Yep. I'll, you tell me what you got and I'll check your work. Okay, 0. 0.68. That's what I got, 0. 0.68. Okay. <laughs> so, roughly two-thirds of, of an ounce of that. Okay. And the other one is 10.3. And we were supposed to be doing 6.9, and that's over 1.5. So 6.9 divided by 10.3 times 1.5, right? Yeah. Well, the 6.9 divided by 10.3 part of it is 0.669 or 0.67, and then uh, now what times 1.5 you said? 1.5, yeah, times 1.5. Is 1.004, so 1. So I said, I said, I was right, I said it'd be about 1 ounce. Yeah. I, was, I was right, alright. So, so you want 3 quarters of this? Yeah, 3 quarters of that and, one, and the full of this. And okay. full of these two. Where's your scissors? And the multi screen too. This is, uh, the cat's going first, right? The 16 minutes? Well, they're all 60. Everything goes oh, everything right. Everything's right. going in. It's bittering, huh? Everything's going in at 60 minutes right now. Okay. Including the multidextrin, so we'll... Yeah, let me open. You want to put the help the DME in first? For the minute? No, I got this all measured out. My three quarters, I'm ready. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's see where you're at. Actually, it was two-thirds. Okay, there's your two-thirds. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be close. We're good. Three pounds. All right. Ready? Yeah, you want me to shut this off? Um, I just want to stir the snot out of it. Can't make that mess. I've never played with maltodextrin before, have you? Nope. Alright. I've seen it in recipes, but never used it. Alright. To increase wart viscosity and smoothness in low malt beers. Adds to mouth feel and head retention. This does the same thing that you might use care peels or even uh, wheat. Also can help in those. Uh, I'm about putting a pound of wheat in every beer I make lately. Because supposedly it can uh, add similar character. Like in a pound in a bat, really you wouldn't taste it, wouldn't add to the flavor or anything. But it could add to like the mouthfeel or the burners. I want to smell it. Okay. 
East Kent Golden. There's some there to smell. And all right, and last but not least, our second DME. We don't look like we're boiling over there, do we? No. minutes uh, we are gonna we'll throw some Irish moss in at 15 uh, probably won't be turning the camera back on for that uh, again oh, what not, teaspoon? yeah a teaspoon of, actually it calls for a half a teaspoon half a teaspoon so uh, it actually says or one world flock tablet I'm not sure what a world, world flock tablet is it's probably the same thing huh? yeah <laughs> uh, That's the same purpose same purpose yeah and we're not going to do the gypsum, but it does call for two teaspoons of gypsum. Um, and that's usually if you have a softer, if you got soft water, you want to use something like gypsum to throw some more minerals in it. We're at flame out. I just turned this off. We've got our wort chiller in there. Uh, it's kind of sterilized, so we're going to leave it sit for a minute. And then we're going to do like we did last week, cool our wort. I did put in some... Uh, Irish moss at about uh, five minutes instead of fifteen. It's in there. Okay. We do slide it over to the other side. Of the we set it. I think we set it right here on the countertop. You're um, that? I think we know. I think we put a. Oh, we put a pan on it. This one's too old, but she did get that. So. That'll work. Did you He-Man move it, or did you have to grab one side? No, nope, I think I moved it. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> it's too difficult for two people, I think. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, you know what? I couldn't imagine moving it like more than five gallons. No. <laughs> five gallons technically must weigh about 40 pounds plus the weight. And it's not, it's not like... Plus the weight up on your shoulder yeah, either. Plus the weight of the know? pot. But yeah, five gallons of hot, boiling hot liquid is... In my opinion, somewhat dangerous to move. It's, uh, well, I don't love doing it. But. So we got the water coming in there, going through the hose, through the board mm -hmm. chiller. Can undo this kink there a little bit. That probably helps. Whatever. A lot. And it comes back out in that, that spot right good. there. Yeah. That is boiling hot water coming out of there. That's nice mm -hmm. cold water. Cold water going in. Yeah. Hot water coming uh, out. I think I put a thermometer on there last week, and I think we were at. Low 40s, I think it was. Where's the water coming? This yeah, time yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. And coming out there, it's oh, I don't know, probably it might be down to 200 degrees. <laughs> so here's our our yeasties. Nice sanitized bucket there. Here's our auto siphon. I take this end. You take that. It's sweet. <laughs> All right, so we want to make this. We want to aerate this a little bit. So I'm going to shake it. Like that. Shake it. Shake it, baby. You want to run shake it through it. the colander? I can. I mean, do whatever you want. But I'm... This will make a fair amount of bubbles. I've done it before. Yeah, what about this? Uh, this is mm -hmm. this is sanitized. Run it through this one. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. You go. Mm -hmm. There you go, lift that up again. Mm. Lots of lots of foam, lots of bubbles. What you want. Pour into a powder does cut you a lot of the hops and stuff. That, mm -hmm. um, and even some of the, the proteins, they, especially if you use the uh, Irish moss, which makes the proteins right. coagulate together into clumps and sit on the bottom. Yeah, it makes them a little bigger so they settle out a little faster. And, and, and they will get hopefully they'll be left on the bottom of that pail. 
you know, our boil kettle right you now. Know, or, or, if not, or and if you we're dumping through a colander, hopefully it, they, they get caught in the right. So. And one other disadvantage of doing this is that you're going to leave a half inch of wart at the bottom of that our boil kettle when we're done. And uh, dumping the other way, I got every last drop of that sweet wart. But uh, I do end up with a cleaner ferment, and if I'm going to wash the yeast or whatever, there's less uh, trub and stuff in it. Uh, we're talking about the cold break and the hops and stuff that we're leaving, trying to leave in the boil bucket at this point in the game. And there's a good amount in there. Right here, let me get some light in there. Yep. Yeah. That's tough to see now I stirred it yeah, up. Yeah, stirred it up. But it, this stuff actually, there's there's a lot of stuff that we left in there. Not all that much water beer that it's, we lost. It's pretty thick and gooey. Right. There's yeah, uh, that, that little bit of beer isn't worth it. Right. It's, uh, it's not worth it. It's don't be greedy. You know, and even a little bit that came out in the uh, strainer is worth, is worth it to try to catch it. Plus, that helps add the air. And we got a nice full fermenter of nice bubbly uh, wort ready to uh, go. You don't get any fleas or dog hair in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Just give it a minute here to settle out, and we can take a gravity reading. See where we're at when compared to where we're supposed to be. Uh, I don't think we need to worry too much about uh, temperature. We need this for kicks, right? Looks like it's in the, right near the 80s, <laughs> a little low. So, uh, but it's uh, right in the range where I'm going to add uh, with my uh, high ground under the calibrated at 70 degrees. I'm, gonna, and I'm pretty close to 80, so I'm going to add a point to that. We definitely are still over five gallons. So uh, we started with a little bit more water than we should have. We started with six and a half gallons. And uh, we didn't lose quite as much as we were expecting to, but uh, we're pretty close. We're about 56. Sweet. Well, like I said, we got that malt, we put in malted dextrin, which is going to bump up. It's unfermentable. That's going to bump up our, our, our original gravity and our right. final gravity a little bit. I, You can go online and look up and see how oh, much. like a pound of that? It was eight, eight ounces. Yeah. So if you want to have money, you can look up eight ounces of maltodextrin and how much that's going to bump your gravity for, for five gallons. Um, got this recipe off, off of, just offline. It was somebody's recipe. Um, through a, different form, a few different forms trying to find a decent uh, stout recipe. The, um, but if you're making your own recipe, there's a few resources you can use. And even with a recipe like this, you can plug it in and, and then you can tweak it too. Uh, you, use, you use what, Beersmith? I use Beersmith. That's, uh, that's the program. a program that you buy. It costs roughly 20 bucks, give or take a couple dollars, mm -hmm. depending on who and where you buy it from. Great program. But that, now that you, there is a free version. It's just a little bit. Oh, you can get a two week, two week trial or something over there. So oh, they don't have. You, can, does, you can use it. You can keep using it after that, I think. Mm -hmm. but, but it but you, but it loses some of its functionality. Typical. You, know, you get a two week trial for the full, and then you can keep, continue using it for free. There are at least three or four other programs. Yeah. Uh, Promash, uh, which uh, might be another paid one. And then Brewer's Friend is a great website that has lots of different. Uh, brewing program that's all yeah. free. It's all through the web. It's, so you go yeah, to the website it's and online, uh, and it's it's real similar to um, the Beersmith. I mean, Beersmith has got is quite a bit more robust, but a lot of the functionality of that I just don't need. Uh, I, you know, and what I'll do is um, you know I'll just this is what I got. I throw some things in there and look and see what it does, what the color is going to be. Maybe adjust uh, the grain up or down to adjust the color a little bit. Uh, adjust the, the hops a little bit, adjust the, the IBUs, um, and I love, a lot of my recipes I just wing it. <laughs> Brewer's Friend is a really good uh, for like formulating a beer recipe is really good. Mr. Malty has a really good yeast calculator. Yeah. Um, Yeastcalc.com has like three different kinds of yeast calculators. Uh, so if yeah. you get into like saving your own yeast and reusing well, even if, yeast. Even if you're using, and, um, you know, a uh, a packet of dry yeast is, is, is good enough for most most five gallon 
uh, if you're unless you're getting into a beer that's pretty big, like if above one point oh six oh. Right. If you're getting, you if know. you get into something, if you're doing something over six percent alcohol, uh, a lot of times you're going to actually need two packets of yeast, of the dry yeast. Now, if you're using, claim. if you're using liquid yeast, uh, even in a five gallon you really batch, should start a starter. Make should a starter. Make a starter, or, or you're going to need to buy two vials, and that their liquid yeast is expensive, expensive to begin with. Compared to dry. To begin yeast. with, yeah. There's more. More varieties in the liquid, but uh, so you can make a starter. Two vials of yeast, of liquid yeast, cost twice as much as what some of my all grain batches cost me for all the rest of the ingredients combined. The hops and the grains and everything. Yeah, I can build. So, so yeah, um, we'll get into washing yeast and, and how you can harvest your own yeast. Uh, and we'll, we'll probably be getting into that pretty quick, um, and maybe next week we'll do a starter. Show how that works. Sure. That's going to be our first brew in a bag. I should have done it this week. Oh, well, we'll do it next week. we got lots of things planned for you in the future. Some brew in a bag episodes, yeast starters, uh, getting into all grain. Uh, yeah. And there's like so many different ways to do all grain, too, and what kind of equipment you need. Yeah, and, we'll, um, do, we'll do, you know, with yours, we're going to do the brew in a bag next week, and then uh, we'll take a look at my uh, my ghetto setup that I use. Right. And then... Uh, so, what, like, brew in a bag is where you can do all grain only using one pot. And then Chris's ghetto setup, you use one pot in a makeshift cooler as, for his uh, mash ton. Actually, I, use it. I don't need it for the mash ton. I could. I use it actually just for sparging. Yeah, yeah. These are all terms we're to get into right, next right, week. Right, so, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, It's what makes this hobby so much fun is uh, you be creative and, and relax, man. Have a home brew and uh, enjoy the room. Even when you make mistakes, you still get beer, so don't be afraid. Alright. Cheers. Rock and roll, baby. Slatcha. Hi, I'm Steve Spears. I'm the owner of Dunkirk Homebrew. We are a local uh, homebrew shop here in the Dunkirk, Fredonia area, uh, located at 3375 East Main Road, Dunkirk, New York. We are a full line um, supplier of beer and wines, wine brewing equipment and supplies. Come on down, most of my customers become my friends. Thank you. What, what was, this one, do you know what it was supposed to be? <laughs> that helps if we do, I mean, this one, this one seems almost like a, a Sort of stouty beer to me, actually. It's got a this one, with this one, we uh, yeah. this was the one we did with uh, adjuncts, but we did, it wasn't a kit. This is E5, right? Yeah, it's E5. It was adjuncts, but with no kit. It was just a uh, right. But I don't remember the recipe or is it no, no, off the top of my head. You want me to start get it. giving you those ahead of time? So you yeah, know what yeah, you I do want those ahead of time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this one. I, you know, they think this was a stout, actually, now that I think about it's it. It's a little chocolatey. I think, it's, yeah, I this think was this a stout. seems like it should be a stout. This uh, ought to be a stout. Yeah, this was a stout. No, it could be no a this is the too. one. It could be a porter or something. Oh, you know why this is, I know why this is flat. I bottled it two days ago. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> this <laughs> is the Guinness well. clone. This yeah. the Guinness clone. Right. <laughs> it's it's like I know why it's flat. It's like I told it's you it was a good stout, beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just bottled it two days ago. That's why it's flat. Yeah. So this is a beer that's been bottled for two days. Yeah. And for aroma, I give it a 9 out of 12. I like it. It's kind of chocolatey and good. I think it smells good or something. To, um, for appearance, uh, well... It's a stout, looks good. It's, you know, can't really, looks like a stout should. I think it's a little thin, maybe. But uh, it's actually, even after two days, starting to get a little car carbonation, some legs. I still see a few bubbles around the rim of the glass. So, and so it's got a two out of three there. Uh, flavor, it's chocolatey, balanced, um, warm. Um, I think the flavor's only gonna be better. I give it a 15 out of 20, though. And, uh, for mouthfeel, yeah, I think it's a little thin and it's kind of flat, so it's hard to score it real well. I don't know if it'll get any thicker, <laughs> but um, certainly it will get carbonated. So we gave it, I gave it a two out of five so far there, but I'm sure it's going to get better over the next few weeks and that score will go up. The overall impression, uh, well, I'm impressed. I think it's going to be a great beer. I gave it a seven out of ten so far. Again, I 
think I have a little bit of age on it. I think it's going to turn out to be really a really nice stout. And so we're at 35 out of 50 on that. <laughs> and I expect it to get better and better over the next four or five weeks. <clears throat> I'm almost embarrassed to give these scores because I really, really like this beer. <laughs> so. Uh, when I, and I did just bottle it two days ago, and when I bottled it, I, I, there was a little bit left over, and I sipped it, and I said, oh my god, that's good. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I'm being extremely generous here, but I, I'm loving this beer. And, and I'm not a huge stout drinker. I, I, I do like Guinness, but I think this is, I prefer this to Guinness, I think, any day of the week. Uh, nice malty aroma. Uh, I gave it a, a, a 10 out of 12 on aroma. Uh, Appearance, uh, color is appropriate, the clarity is excellent. Uh, I, it is dead flat, uh, but uh, you know, it was bottled two days ago. So I gave it a two out of three uh, flavor. Uh, smooth, multi flavor, well balanced for the style, pleasant finish and aftertaste. I, I gave it an 18 out of 20. I, I just like the way, I, I really like this beer. Uh, I can't imagine it uh, improving that much other than being carbonated. I don't think it's going to, it may blend and, and whatnot, but I, I, I think it's the way it tastes right now is, is really good. Mouthfeel, uh, I, I gave it a four out of five mostly because it, it is a little bit uh, flat, but other than that, you know, the, the body, the carbon, you know, the body, the warmth, the creaminess, the, the palate sensation, it's all there, I think. Uh, overall impression, eight out of ten. Uh, Wanted to give myself some wrinkle room just in case it does improve. <laughs> so, I expected to get better. It's I, be I, I can't. I really. I can't. Other year. than being carbonated, I can't see it getting much better. But I. I, I did put it in at uh, 42 out of 50, uh, just on the, on the hopes that, that that maybe it'll get that much better and it'll be a 48 next week. <laughs> okay. And episode five, I don't know what we made for episode five. Yeah, keep better notes here. Ooh. Well, it's very dark. I've got notes. Are they all dark bears? This... Not much of that. Yeah, so I don't remember... <laughs> Clear my... <laughs> This one has the strongest smell of any of them. Here's a Roma. We have a Roma. Okay. I'd say for what it is. What if we don't know what it is? <laughs> no, for what it is. It yeah, which like is what? <laughs> well, it smells like a stout. Oh, this is the Guinness clone. This go. is the Guinness clone. Okay. See, the camera girl knows her beers. All right, even though I don't like stout, I gave it a 40 out of 50. I gave it a 12 out of 12 for aroma. I like the aroma. I could definitely smell like a malt aroma to it, which I think is in line with a stout, in my experience. Appearance, I gave it a 2 out of 3. Lost the head incredibly fast. and I have, like, nothing really left. Um, flavor, I gave it a 17 out of 20. It, uh, from looking at the descriptors, it has a diacetyl, I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, a taste to it. Almost like a butter, butterscotch or toffee flavor aftertaste um, to it, like an artificial butter mm -hmm. taste. Um, it says sometimes perceived as a slickness on the tongue, which seemed to fit with that. Um, Mouthfeel, I gave it a 3 out of 5. I thought it was a little sharp, kind of a sour, acidic taste to it with, on the palate, and I gave it a 6 out of 10 for overall impression. Alright. Um, I was actually a little rougher on this one than in general. Aroma, I gave it a 10 out of 12. Um, it, it, it definitely had a, a an aroma to it, but it was, uh, what, it just wasn't where I thought it should be for the style of beer. Well, it wasn't bad. Uh, but it did have poor head retention, so I did uh, give it a 2 out of 3 for appearance. Uh, flavor, I gave it a 14 out of 20. Uh, it just, 
I didn't enjoy it as much as the last time. Last time I liked it a lot better. I, yeah, I, I remember, I, yeah, you did like it a lot. I, like it a I lot. really liked this game. I, really, I did. I, really, I was really happy <laughs> with know? it. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to even put the, the, so, the, the sour beer in to give it that Guinness funk or whatever, you know, and I'm not liking it as much. Uh, mouthfeel, I gave it a, two, a three out of five. Uh, I, I think the low carbonation uh, definitely hurt it there, and, and it didn't have a, a lot of mouthfeel, and the, it just wasn't. It could have been a little warmer, I think. Uh, overall, I gave it a seven out of out of ten, and my comment was I liked it better the last time, and I gave it a thirty-six <laughs> this time. <laughs> all right, we turn around, totally turned around. We all have different tastes for sure. Yeah. Well, I give it a ten out of twelve for aroma. I mean, it does smell smells about like beer should. I don't know. Uh, smells like beer. Uh, it's not perfect. Not, but I don't know what perfect is. I just, but it's not for lack of another score, it got 10 out of 12. Um, <laughs> anyways, it smells good. I thought it smelled a little bit sweet. Um, 3 out of 3 for uh, appearance. I mean, it's clear. I had had, and uh, stouts generally aren't real heady, foamy beers anyway. Uh, granted, we're not serving enough nitrogen or anything, but uh, I, I thought the head was okay. I could still have a little head or a little leasing in there when I, you know. Yeah. So. And I don't expect well, that's a lot of head on That's because I put the dregs so in yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave it a 17 out of 20. I thought it was a little complex, but balanced. Um, I thought the flavor was good. Um, it tastes like a stout could be. I think it tastes better than a Guinness, in my opinion. Like I said, a Guinness isn't one of my favorite stouts. So. Yeah. Um, mouthfeel, I gave it a 5 out of 5. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, um, you know, it tastes good. I liked it. A little bit, um, on the over impression, I gave it a 9 out of 10, so it has a total score of 44 out of 50. I like it. Yeah. That was uh, one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or that beer one, Scott. Yep. One